In the previous video, we looked at constructing a confidence interval for a population mean with a use, leveraging a Z distribution. This video is going to basically do the same thing, only now, instead of having a sample size that we say um, we can employ the central limit theorem or, or a sample size that, that we can assume um, reflects or adequately reflects the, the population values. Now we're gonna have a low sample size, so we're gonna leverage a student T's distribution. So again, with, within BA254, our standard for that um, is now we're gonna say our sample size is less than 30, right? So that's the one thing that we changed in our given information from the previous problem. Everything else is exactly the same. Oh, and I might mention, instead of then the population standard deviation being known, we would also assume that that's a sample value, right? So when we look back in, uh, we can talk about when this population standard deviation value being known as a really, statistically speaking, powerful statement to make. But in this case, we're saying that, again, just like we have a, a low sample size, it's not necessarily representative of the entire population. Um, even though we may have derived that in, in a statistically valid way in terms of the, the sampling methodology, but again, just the sheer size of that sample size does not allow us to use a z-distribution, and again, we can't use, make the expansive statement that we know what the population standard deviation is. So we're solidly in this world where we're going to use a t-distribution, but ultimately, we're asking ourselves still the same question is, we're trying to find what is the reasonable interval in which that population um, in this case, mean would reside. So I took the liberty of adding in our t distribution formulas, a series of them. Again, we can we can walk amongst these formulas, and, and they're very very closely related. Um, we are going to use that particular version of our formula to do the calculation. So just like we did before, we're going to load in uh, the information that we know. Again, we're looking now for a confidence interval for a population mean. Our sample value was. 12.10 plus and minus, we'll skip t for just a moment. We've got the 0.12 divided now by our square root of 10, okay? Now, we introduced t distributions and we talked about that there's a lot of similarity with a z distribution. Um, we do need to use a different table. Obviously, we have a different, uh, different type of, of uh, distribution that we're dealing with. Um, so we've got this t distribution. To understand the way that our tables work, we have to know two things about our specific um, T distribution that we're dealing with. Because again, we have this whole family of different distributions that make up student T's, um, with that limiting distribution being the Z distribution. But in each one of these, this distribution specifically is defined by the degrees of freedom. We have 10 observations, one sample conducted. We're gonna deal with nine degrees of freedom for this example. We also need to figure out what this alpha is here. That's why we keep seeing this alpha in the subscript down there is it's referring to, again, kind of the boundary, how far out in this particular distribution we're going away from the center. Now we know we're keeping the same confidence interval assumption here at 95%. Okay, so we've got 47.5% there, or the area underneath this T distribution is 0 0.4750 over to this value that we're looking for. That means that our alpha that we have, because we have, of course, half of that distribution on this side of the mean, we've got 0 0.025 or 2.5% left over there. If we then go literally, if we say on our table that we're using for class, we go down to 9 degrees of freedom, and in terms of our alpha, we go over to 0 0.025, the intersecting value that we're going to get from our table is 2.262. That's gonna be this value here, 2.262, positive, negative 2.262. That's the value that goes into our calculation up here. In terms of starting to work through this specific value, we've got 12.10 plus and minus point, if we take the square root of 10 first, take that value, uh, divide the 0.12 by that answer. We come up uh, 2.262 times um, it ends up being somewhere right around 0 0.038. Yep, cheated, wrote it right over here on the side. Uh, if I then multiply the 2.262 times the 0 0.038, I'm going to end up somewhere right around 0 0.09, right? So this tells us that our interval exists between 12.01 and 12.19. So again, to summarize, 
what we would then say is we are 95% certain, we are 95% certain that the truth, the value that we're looking for, right, the population mean exists between the 12.01 and the 12.19.